Hello everyone, once again I welcome you to my series of lecture that is Understanding Pharmaceutical Science with Dr. Hari Haran. So, today we are going to discuss about the genetic organization of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. I have divided this lecture into three parts, one first we understand what is meant by a prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell, second we will discuss about the genetic organization in a prokaryotic cell and third we will discuss about the genetic organization in an eukaryotic cell. So, before getting into it, first we understand what is meant by a cell. So, cell can be basically defined as a, it is the structural and functional unit of an organism because the cell carries the entire information of an organism if it is multicellular in nature. If a single cellular in nature, it does its own functions and the entire genetic material is present in a structural form inside a cell which helps to carry it out these functions in the organization, organism, right. So, if you see the different types of cell, so the types of cell we can broadly classify the types of cells into two major types, one is called a prokaryotic cell, a simple example is a bacteria and second is an eukaryotic cell, uh, a single cell eukaryotic cell is an yeast to a multicellular like a human cell. So, if you see what is a prokaryotic cell, prokaryotic it is a Greek term we can divide this word into two one, one is called pro, second is the carrion, pro means before or primitive, carrion means nut or kernel, that means it has a very primitive stage of enclosed organelles, only the cell carries an outer cell wall which is enclosed in nature, whereas its internal membranes are not, internal organelles are not enclosed in a membrane structure. And moreover, it has a primoidal nucleus that is the genetic material is concentrated in a location in the cytoplasm. It does not have a membrane enclosed nucleus and all its contents are not divided into compartments or rooms by a membrane walled structure. So, generally if you see the prokaryotic cell, it lacks the membrane enclosed organelles as we can see in eukaryote. That means, it does not have a mitochondria like structure, it does not have a chloroplast like structure, but it has structure which is not contains a membrane enclosed organelles. That is why we call it as a primitive carrion like structure, that is a primitive nucleoid like structure. So, the best example is the bacteria. This you can see from the picture itself, the cytoplasm is pr present and the DNA is concentrated at a particular location in the cytoplasm itself. The second type of cell is the eukaryotic cell. So, in Greek word eukaryotic means, eu means true and karyon means nut cell. That means, it has a well defined membrane organal structures inside the cell. That means, the cell carries an outer cell wall and each organelle inside the cell also carries a membrane structure. Example, the nucleus is a membrane bound genetic material is present which is covered by a nuclear membrane. Similarly, the Golgi complex is covered by a membrane the mitochondria is covered by a cisternae. So, these are membrane structures, well organized one is present in eukaryotic cell. So, the well known example a single celled eukaryotic is a fungi yeast and a multi cell may be a plant, animal or a humans. So, if you see the genetic organization, before understanding the genetic organization individually of a prokaryote and the genetic organization of a eukaryote, first we understand a basic genetic organization. So, the genetic organization is generally the core one is the DNA. So, the DNA is a deoxyribonucleic acid, it is in generally in double standard form made up of four nucleotides that is adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. And this DNA is packed with the help of an associated proteins, generally in eukaryote we can see an histone. So, the DNA is packed with an protein and compressed and the compressed structure we called as a chromosome. So, the DNA in either in prokaryotic cell or in eukaryotic cell 
it is present in a form called as chromosome, a compressed form, right. So, this I have shown in the picture. So, we have a cell, the cell contains the nucleus which is an uh, genetic material is concentrated covered by a nuclear membrane and the genetic material is present in the form of a chromosome that is the DNA is associated with a protein. So, then we get the DNA which is in a standard form. So, why there is a need of packaging of this chromosome? If you see that there are several reasons which governs the packaging of this DNA chromosome. The first one is that the chromosomes makes it a compact form so that the DNA can readily fits into a cell. And second one, this will protect the DNA getting damaged. And third one, it is easy for the DNA to replicate and to divide as a chromosome, then it can be divided while the cell also gets divided. So, this was a easy form to migrate to the daughter cells while the cell division is happening. So, this I have given a pictorial representation of a prokaryotic and an eukaryotic cell. The prokaryotic chromosome will be present in the cytoplasm and it is associated with certain proteins then you can see the DNA structure. Whereas, the eukaryote the DNA is wrapped with a protein then it is packed and condensed to form a chromosome and it is located inside the nucleus. So, now we understand about the genetic organization of the prokaryotes. So, if you see the genetic organization of prokaryotes generally the prokaryotes carries a single chromosome and it is present in the cytoplasm and it is sometimes circular in nature, most cases it is a circular in nature and certain cases it is linear in nature. Nowadays, we also find certain prokaryotes carries a multiple chromosome, whereas 99 percent, percent cases the genetic makeup is a single chromosome in the prokaryote. So, you can see from the figure, it is a single chromosome mostly circular in nature and it is present in the cytoplasm. So, if we see the packing of DNA in a prokaryote, so the since it is a chromosome, the DNA should be packed inside a cell with a protein. So, moreover the prokaryotic cell, the best example is bacteria which is a very small in nature, it does not needs more functions to perform. So, it has a limited function, so the size of the genome also very small. So, it can easily packed inside a cytoplasm inside a bacteria. Generally, the E. coli can be packed its chromosome about 1 micrometer in size into its uh, uh, about uh, 1 millimeter length of the DNA into a 1 micrometer of the bacteria. So, there is the associated proteins and the method of uh, packing of this DNA in a, in a bacteria is very less known. What is the protein associated with the DNA if we see that the bacteria that is the prokaryotes have no histones or nucleosomes associated with it. The proteins which is associated with or difference there are small proteins which are very similar in function to that of histones is associated with this DNA for packing purpose. And since it does not have nucleus, so generally we use a term called nucleoid. So, nucleoid is nothing but the prokaryotic cells carrying a one complete copy of chromosome in a packed structure located or concentrated at a particular area of the chromosome we called as a nucleoid. So, how the replication occurs in the prokaryotic DNA if you see that the prokaryotic cell it divides very rapidly. For example, the E. coli which has a doubling time that is a single cell divided into two cell with a span of 15 minutes whereas, the human cell which is an eukaryotic one which requires 24 hours for its cell division. So, since the prokaryotic cells divide at such a rapid rate, so the division DNA replication also happens at a very fast rate. So, it can divide into two goes to two daughter cells in some instances it can replicate into four also. Whereas, the major difference is that it does not contain any intron sequence in its uh, genetic makeup. Moreover, it can replicate at a fast rate 
while the replication occurring it can do the transcription and translation which is not possible in eukaryotes that is the major contradiction between a prokaryote and eukaryote so the next one is a plasmid the extra chromosomal dna of a prokaryote we call as a plasmid it is more frequently occurs in ones to many many numbers based on the copy number of the plasmid generally present as a double stranded circular dna form so whereas compared to the host large chromosome this plasmid does not require for the growth of the bacteria then what is the importance of the plasmid if you see that the plasmid carries certain genes which helps in the survival of this bacteria in adverse condition especially it will produce certain enzymes which is antibiotic resistance in nature for example penicillinase is secreted which break down the beta lactam ring of the penicillin thereby it able to survive into that um, environment where the antibiotics is present so unlike the chromosomal dna plasmid dna not present in single copy it can make many copies that is generally called as copy number and for example if you see the e coli it can produce a copy up to 100 so this is the basic genetic organization of a prokaryote so if you see the genetic organization of a eukaryote similarly the eukaryotic genetic information is stored in a place called nucleus so eukaryotic chromosomes are enclosed inside a membrane bound organelle called as nucleus which is generally present in the cytoplasm of the cell so the pictorial representation of you can see the cell carries the nucleus which is a membrane enclosed organelle carrying uh, carrying the double stranded dna so this one will helps in many functions so that's why the eukaryotic chromosomes are very crucial in nature it maintains its uh, integrity all the time so the mutations are generally less in eukaryotes whereas if you can see the mutation is very high in prokaryotes so in eukaryotes if you see the eukaryotic chromosome the eukaryotic cell have multiple linear chromosomes generally the chromosomes can range from 2 to 50 for example if you take humans we have 23 pairs of chromosome that is 46 chromosomes we are having and certain eukaryotic species for example protozoa tetrahymena can have a thousands of chromosomes that is considered as a macronuclear organism so most these chromosomes can be an diploid most cases and in certain cases it is haploid or polyploid so the diploid chromosome if you can see the majority of eukaryotic cells are diploid in nature that means it contains two copies of each chromosome so if these copies are similar in nature then we called as the homologous because it is generally come from both the parents each parents and certain cases it is haploid or polyploid in nature so if you see the haploid cells it is a single copy of each chromosome will present you can see in the sperm as well as in the egg uh, during ovulation the egg formation it carries either a x chromosome in sperm or y chromosome in a egg so this one fertilized forms a diploid chromosomes so it is generally the haploid chromosomes or generally helps in the sexual reproduction and in certain cases polyploid cells are be there so polyploid cells are the chromosome which is more than two copies of each will be there and it is present in very meager species and majority of its adult cells can exist in polyploid right then next terms comes a chromatin so half of the molecular mass of a chromosome if you see the associated proteins so the region where the dna is associated with the protein we called as a chromatin the major protein which is associated with the dna in eukaryotic cell is the histone so histone is a basic protein which is generally associated with the dna and helps in the packing as you can see from the figure the dna gets round towards the histones uh, histones get condensed we call the chromatin then it finally compact inside a nucleus and forms the chromosome so apart from histones there are also non histone proteins also associated with dna so if you see that 
during the DNA replication the double stranded DNA will be segregated and forms a two single stranded DNA. So, to maintain the DNA in single strand there are certain DNA binding proteins will be done which is called as a non histone in nature and it helps in regulation of this DNA replication, repair, transcription process also. So, this entire part we can call as nucleosome that is the compact of this eukaryotic chromosome that is the DNA associated with things compact and kept inside the nucleus we call as a nucleosome. So, what is the advantage of being a nucleosome is that the length of the DNA can be drastically compact up to 10,000 folds and kept inside a small structure like a nucleus. So, this is the entire idea about the genetic makeup of the eukaryotic cells. So, if you see the comparison between this prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells is that the, the diameter of the cell overall is 1 to 3 micrometer in range in prokaryotes especially the bacteria and the eukaryotes are generally larger in size can range from up to 5 micrometer 10 to 100 micrometer also you can see. If you see the location of DNA in prokaryote the DNA is present as a nucleoid, nucleoid and in the cytoplasm whereas, the genetic information that is the DNA is located inside the nucleus in eukaryote. The number of chromosomes if you see there will be mostly single chromosome in prokaryote. In majority cases in eukaryote it is 2 to 50 chromosome, in rare case it is 1000 chromosome may present. So, the type of chromosome if you see it is generally a single chromosome will be present in prokaryote, but in eukaryote most cases it is diploid and in certain cases it is haploid or polyploid in nature. And the protein which is associated in this packing it is not known in prokaryotes, but the major protein is the histones and the extra chromosomal DNA if you see that it is plasmid in prokaryotes whereas, mitochondria is present in eukaryotes. So, this is the pictorial representation how the difference between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell happens its structural as well as it is genetic status. So, thank you very much for understanding about the genetic makeup of the both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In a future lectures you can see the genetic transformations happening in a uh, bacteria prokaryotic cells. So, thank you very much.